Hi guys! In this video we will explain how to get, modify and flash Marlin's firmware in your Creality Ender 3 Max 3D printer. You wanna know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, as you might already know, the Ender 3 Max stock firmware has a few bugs on it and we even made a video on this subject a while back. There are several websites where you can find firmware versions for your printer. The advantage of downloading from these websites is that the files are already compiled and ready to be installed in the printer. The downside is that most of them are not up to date and might even have bugs on them as we explained in the other video. An alternative is to download the firmware from Marlin's website. The advantage from downloading directly from Marlin's website is that you always get the latest version. The downside is, like we said, you need to compile it. But don't worry because it's very easy and we will explain it all in just a moment. With the early generation Ender 3s and their 8-bit boards, before you could install the firmware for the first time, you had to install the bootloader. Now, with the 32-bit boards and the Max is equipped with one of them, you don't need to worry about that. The board will automatically upload the firmware. The downside of the bin files is that they are already compiled, which means that if you want to edit something in the firmware, like add a leveling sensor, for example, you can't do that with this bin file. You need to have the raw or uncompiled firmware to do that. The way you do that is to go to Marlin's website and download the firmware from there. You also need the config files for the Creality Ender 3 Max. The config files can be found here. Once both downloads are complete, you will end up with a couple of zip files. Extract their contents and delete the zip files. Now, enter the config files folder and look for the Creality Ender 3 Max files. Copy all of them and then go back and place them inside the Marlins folder. If it asks to replace or skip, choose Replace. Now we need a software to edit and compile the firmware. With 8-bit boards, you had Arduino IDE. But for 32-bit boards, you will need Visual Studio Code and Platform I.O. Both are free to use. With both installed, open Visual Code Studio and at the side, you can find Platform I.O. Next, in PIO Home, click on Open Project and select the Marlin folder where you have the platform.ini file. The first thing you need to do is to check if the environment line is correct for the board you want to compile. So, here at the left, click on platformio.ini and check this line here. In this case, it's pointing for an Atmega 2560 microcontroller, which is the wrong one. The one for the Ender 3 Max is this one instead. There is a simple way to know this and it's valid for every board. Just go to configuration.h and check which board is defined. Here you can see that it's the Creality V4 board. Now go here to SRC, then pins, and then open pins.h and search for the Creality V4. Once you find it, you will see the correct environment line next to it. Most of the modifications in the firmware are done in these two files, configuration.h and configurationadv.h. 
One good thing about Marlin is that everything is well explained within the code. If you want to enable a feature, just remove the two slashes at the beginning of the line. To disable a line, just add the two slashes back. Sometimes enabling or disabling a feature will require additional lines to be added or removed. So if the compilation process fails, read the results as it might help. For example, if you want to add a leveling sensor, you will need to enable several lines for it to work. But if you plan on installing a BL Touch sensor on your Ender 3 Max, just follow our detailed tutorial video. Other modifications you can do is by modifying the values. In this example, you have the steps per millimeter. You can edit here the extruder step value that you have determined during calibration for future use. OK, so to start compiling, just click on the small check here at the bottom. When done, and if everything compiled correctly, you will see the green line with the word success in the middle. The compiled bin file can be found inside the folder where you have the firmware. The fastest way to get there is to pass your mouse pointer and right click over the dot PIO here at the left and then select Reveal in File Explorer. Next, enter the .pio folder, then build and so on, until you reach the bin file. As we explained in the beginning, this is the file that you need to copy to the memory card, but there's one important thing you need to remember. If you plan on flashing the firmware more than once, you need to use different file names when saving the bin file to the memory card. That's why the file is generated with a timestamp. With the file saved in the memory card, place it in the printer and turn on the printer. Wait a few seconds and that's it. Simple as that. In the info menu, we can see the version number updated with the Marlin version that we updated. And that's it you guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Also, if you are not a subscriber yet, go ahead and click on subscribe and don't forget to activate the little bell so you can be notified every time we publish a new video. We will see you guys next time. Bye!